UCI Flayer. We have a change to our schedule now on BBC Two. Saturday Kitchen Live. Good morning. We, of course, would like to acknowledge the incredibly sad news about His Royal Highness the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. Our warmest wishes and deepest respect goes to Her Majesty the Queen and the whole royal family at this difficult time. We're going to carry on here as usual, but on BBC Two, and do our best to bring you 90 minutes of world-class recipes. This is Saturday Kitchen Live. And welcome to the show. We've got friends old and new for you today. Our very good old friend, Jane Baxter, and our newest newbie, Santiago Lastra. And keeping our glasses topped up throughout the morning, she's everyone's best mate, it's Helen McGinn. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you, Santiago. Uh, our special guest today is an actor whose long and impressive career spans a host of iconic shows including Men Behaving Badly, one of my favourites, Waterloo Road and The Line of Duty. Uh, he's now back on our screens in K. Mellor's The Syndicate and, flatteringly, he's pleased to be here because he's a bit of a Saturday Kitchen superfan. So please welcome Neil Morrissey. Yeah. I can't believe I'm here. You didn't just say that, right? No, 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 absolutely not. I watch this every Saturday. It's part <laughs> of my routine. I've written about it in, uh, in many of the, of the journals. Yeah. You know, that uh, that's my routine. I get up for this show. Is it, is it the food or is it the tip-top presenting? It's, it's a bit of touch of both. <laughs> Actually, because it's amazing. Everyone says it. Every week people will say, I'm amazed that you can still cook and do an interview at the same time. And your food always looks fantastic. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I love chefs. I love chefs. <laughs> very, very, very excited. Uh, right, let's see what's on the menu today. Jane, you're kicking off. What have you I'm kicking off with... You always, what you get here is the smells as well, and you see it all happening right in front of you. And I can't say that I'm excited. Either. And you get to chat to this one. Hi. How do you, how do you get on, Hells? <laughs> At the end of the show, food heaven, food hell. Yes. So food heaven, what is that for you? Well, I mean, my missus doesn't really eat lamb. OK. So I never have lamb at home. Right. So lamb has always been a special sort of treat for me, which I tend to have when we're going out. And, of course, there hasn't been very much of that recently, has there? OK. Um, so um, lamb would be great. And, of course, I've got an I'm Irish background. Right. Both my parents are Irish, all Irish cousins and uncles okay. and aunties. And so you, there is not a meal without potatoes. Right. So it has to have potatoes as well. OK. And in, in terms of the veg, you know, my favourite um, cabbage of all time is a hispy. I love the hispy. It's fantastic, okay. Rory. You can do it in so many different ways, can't you? It's a wonderful, wonderful yeah, thing. Right. So, okay. lamb, spuds, hispy. Cabbage. Uh, and what about hell? And um, before you say this, you know how to play this game, right? You've yeah. clearly watched this show time and time again. Yeah, yeah. Tell us what it is. Tripe. Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> As is most people's out there. And then I've, I've talked to a few people about tripe in the last few days, and some people have said to me, but Neil, if it's cooked properly, it's, yeah. it's actually really good. But, you know, I, don't, I still don't go with that. Yeah, we'll have a conversation with Santiago in, uh, in yeah. about that. But listen, if, if I get 50-50, yeah. do, do you have to cook both dishes? It's never happened. <laughs> let's, hope, let's hope today doesn't happen either. Yeah, let's please. Yeah. Let's, Come on, let's folks. Let's not have any more surprises. Don't make right. me eat tripe. If the viewers uh, give you heaven, then you'll hit the jackpot with lamb and potatoes. Uh, so I'm going to make a potato tort layered with thinly sliced potatoes. And I'm gonna... Or will we have a man behaving badly if our viewers give you tripe? So I'm going to make a stew with caramelised onions and tripe, parsley, thyme and bay. Uh, I'm going to top the stew with some lamb's lettuce. Tasty. It's you, still tripe. You make it sound nice. I do. But I, I, it's still it's not good. It's still tripe. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you're going to have to wait to the end of the show to see which one the viewers decide. Pictures of the dishes you've been recreating at home. A couple of souffles here for the brave. Cool. Uh, Paul A. Young's uh, egg uh, affair went down very well. Uh, lots of those. Some retro sun-dried tomato toast. I don't know if you saw those, Neil. Yes, I did, yeah, of course. Did. Yeah. Very nice thing to do with the sun-dried tomato. And I loved it. I loved it with the thing. You're with welcome. With the, the sun-dried tomato and the chilies. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, email them over to us at saturday.kitchen at cactustv.co.uk or share them using the hashtag SaturdayKitchen. Right, Jane, you're up. Crab yep, cakes, I'm, what's going on? I'm up. <laughs> yeah. OK, so I'm going to do the crab cakes first. Um, the sauce is quite strong, so I'm, that's why I'm, I'm putting ricotta in. I know you were a bit amused by that. No, I... Um, a wine cellar behind Dartmouth. Uh, yeah, all sorts of places. Walk Jane's up. got the most uh, lovely unit where she hosts and entertains and overfeeds people. Right. Yeah. Uh, sandwiched between an <coughs> car MOT bay and a pole dancing club. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Sounds like a Donald Trump rally. 
<laughs> as well, because I've got a job which I'm going to be down in Devon. I've oh, only, I've done, you... between now and June, if there's any pop-ups happening, darling, we must exchange numbers. <laughs> I've got to play a Devonian as well. I've got to do the accent and everything. I can't tell you what the job is yet because they'll have to kill me. <laughs> it's one of those things, that, you know, non-disclosure agreement. You know, okay, I'm not allowed so I'm to say just... what it is, but I'm playing a Devonian in a Devonian series. <laughs> <laughs> so just moving on to the sauce now, I'm yes. gonna, and I cook them on uh, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Right. Yeah, so that's what I'll be doing next week. Oh, OK, OK. Bit of lemon, bit of oil. Don't worry, we won't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. you're, a, you're a king cook, though, right? I, I love cooking, yeah. yeah. Is there anything you wouldn't tackle? Um, well, I mean, like peeling a monkfish yeah. is difficult okay. for me. <laughs> right. You know? And um, there's certain things, you know, I mean, like, uh, I'll have a go at pretty much anything, mm. but I prefer, like, the simpler stuff anyway. Sure. And, and stuff that you can start cooking two days before and everything, I quite enjoy that right. sort of stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long, slow cooking and things yeah. like that. Uh -huh. But things that aren't too demanding. There's chefy things that I just am not capable of doing. Right. You know, the, you know people like you are like, well, like for yeah, me. That's you're, not really I'm not bag worthy. either. That's more Santiago. You <laughs> will look at some of the techniques yeah. he uses later. But even this, that sounds quite complex, but actually, in, in, in execution and in ingredients-wise, it's actually not mm. too complex, yeah. is it? I mean, she yeah. pulled up like. It's really minutes. straightforward. A whole... Despite the number of times we talked about it. <laughs> OK. <laughs> right, so there you go. Look Just at that. that. Wow. Um, so, Hells, um, what have you matched to go with these good-looking crab Ooh. cakes? As ever. You... <laughs> Jane, do you like the match? I love it. It's yeah? gorgeous. Yeah. It's, quite, it's quite spicy, then. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Got it has of... got quite a kick to it. Yeah. Um, How's yeah. that for you? Nick? Oh, fantastic. I was going to say, it's, it's not, is that chilli or is that just white pepper? In the... It's just a white pepper and wow. a, cayenne, a bit of cayenne in there. And a tiny yeah. bit of cayenne as well. Yeah. And they always delicious. say white pepper's a bit like gunpowder. Yeah. It's, you can feel it there. Can't yeah. You? This, this must be very exciting for you, um, Hells. Nice. All good? Very good, apart from apart a small a bit of shell. Of shell. <laughs> shell. I'll, I'll, I'll flag that up with Michaela a bit later. <laughs> but seriously delicious. She, she hasn't heard the end. Apparently it's roughish. <laughs> <laughs> and it is, it screams, it screams springtime and it's, it's very light. Yeah. yeah. You know, you'd, you'd imagine... It's that ricotta, right? It's that ricotta light, really it? does... It's massively good. Really good. And, the, and obviously the recipe's on the website. It is? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> coming, up, coming up, you've watched this. Coming up, Santiago, it's it. Because um, the one thing you can't get where we live in France is you can't get anything takeaway or delivered. Right. So it, it is, you are in the kitchen every yeah. day. I mean, they're, it's, they're, very, they're quite, I don't want to say insular, but they're very kind of localised about yeah. their food. So you wouldn't be able to go off and get a Chinese takeaway. Or you no. wouldn't be able to go off to an Indian restaurant. No. So you eat wherever you are, you eat the local food, don't you? Yeah. All the time. But we're lucky we've got the... Because there's a Vietnamese influence in the area, not too far okay. from our area, so I can, can go and get quite exotic ingredients. And also, there are, like, Chinese and Japanese sections set up in the supermarket also. Right. And the butchers are fantastic, so you can, you can choose what you want to eat. Okay. And boy, do we. I mean, pretty much after breakfast, so I'm going, what do you want for dinner? Yeah. Uh, because that's, that's the best that, way to live, right? Especially during yeah. lockdown like this, you know, that's, that's yeah. what we do. Because if something needs a long time, I can start doing it. And actually, I enjoy that process. I enjoy being in the kitchen. I forget about my woes and my cares when I'm, when I'm throwing things about in a kitchen. Presumably, it's kind of all or nothing for your work. Yeah. So you're either away and you're working, yeah. or you're at home cooking. That's right. Well, that's what I've said about... Um, to a few people about the lockdown, that it's people like me, actors, who, who work sporadically yeah. uh, and are 24-7 uh, with my missus, etc. Yeah. I've actually haven't suffered as much because there are been there have been a lot of separations. Yeah. And, and a, a lot of arguments that didn't people and people at home each other all day and said, I didn't realise you were like this, you're chucked. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people at home will be, uh, uh, be going, yeah, that one. from either side of the room because they can't <laughs> separate yet. You know, all of that. It's, uh, it's, it's happening all over, isn't it? But uh, during lockdown, you managed to film The Syndicate. Yeah. So two episodes in. Yeah. Uh, third episode, I believe, goes out on Tuesday night, nine o'clock. That's right. Um, for people who haven't seen it, uh, it's the sort of the same premise, but a different story every yeah. time. Yeah. The premise is is that there is a syndicate of people who buy lottery tickets, and they um, and the essence of the thing is is how that huge amount of money um, changes people, changes people's attitudes and changes people's behaviours. It would cetera, totally cetera. change me. Yeah, I, I'd be unbearable. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> You'd only be able to contact me on my small island in the Caribbean. <laughs>
<laughs> well, and, and that's where I'd keep my, my, my philanthropy, to my island. In the <laughs> but the, um, yeah, I mean, so what's great about Kay Manor, she's a brilliant writer, um, you know, Northern Lass, abs Yorkshire, absolutely brilliant. And you get into everybody's stories, you get the back history of all the characters, of why they're in the situation previous to um, winning this uh, huge amount of money. Right. Or do they? Because, of course, I've taken off on a private jet with my dog to... Um, uh, um, to Monaco. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd like to talk about that, actually, because, I mean, I get the fact that your character, Frank, he's not necessarily the best person because he's stolen the winning lottery ticket. I hope this isn't a spoiler for anyone at home, but it is. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but the thing I, I kind of I can push through is the fact that he'd, he'd rather take his dog than his partner. Yeah. And I've got two cats that I love at home very much, <laughs> yeah. and I'd want to take those with me. Yeah, absolutely. When you get a, you get a private jet, you can do that. He loves his dog. He lives his life for his dog, you know. And uh, you know, I, I can't. I'm not going to give too much of the story away, but um, things kind of resolve themselves. In, 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 Don't spoil it for me. No, no. Uh, okay. um, but uh, it's. Um, it's one of those snap decisions that he makes, and it, it's a, it is a wrong decision. But once it's made, he has to follow it through. And so it just becomes cat and mouse. It's chasing his own tail the whole time because he's now... He'll be careful, um, you know, what a wicked web we weave when we practice to deceive, and he's managed to do that. So it's... Um, I, I can't... I guess we're only up to episode <clears throat> two, aren't we? So I yeah. can't... Uh, I can't no, no, don't, too don't... much. Uh, and, but it's a cat and mouse tail, and, uh, and it starts to hot up. I mean... What, what was interesting, I mean, what was lovely about it is that you spent a lot of time in Monaco yeah. filming. How nice was that? Yeah. Uh, but also, it was, it was filmed during COVID. Yeah. Uh, but there, there isn't a single thing that you think yeah. that was COVID-related. We wanted Even to... the back shot in anywhere. No, we often had to wait quite a long time for the background to disappear because there were so many people in yeah. masks wandering around the streets. I mean, uh, I bet um... it was a nightmare. Yeah, it was a nightmare. But we were... I don't know if you know uh, Monaco, but we were staying next door... Of course I do. ..in Cat... <laughs> <laughs> I went there once. And it was hideously expensive, and I left very Hideously quickly. expensive, but we were staying in Cap Die, which is right next door, but about 10 metres from the border of Monaco. Right. And there were two different... Oh, the cheap seats. Two different, um, two different rules for Cap Die, where there was a curfew at whatever, whatever time, and, and Monaco, which you could still be in a restaurant till about half past nine, as long as you were home by ten. And really? it was a three-minute walk. How nice. So we were able to go out for a couple of dinners, which not, that wasn't happening in the UK, yeah. and it yeah. certainly wasn't happening in, in France anywhere. So almost a sense of normality. Or a sense of normality, but I mean, it was all still, <coughs> we were all still masked up and, yeah. and COVID, and we didn't go out in groups or right. anything like that. That was, that's just crazy talk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we, but we, um, but we, me and my missus did get out for a couple of meals to a couple of good little resis. You know? Nice. Very nice. Nice. You got some good recommendations now. Well, I mean, we went to the, the big, um, uh, um, what's the big Japanese um, one that they used to have at the Metropolitan Hotel? Yeah, and it'll come to me. I'm just having a senior moment. And a, and a place called um, The Steak Bar. You know what to expect, right? Yeah, you know what to expect. <laughs> but their Parmesan... Will you be disappointed? Parmesan and truffle chips were just fantastic. And right. the steaks were of extremely good quality, which is ho often hard to find in, in, in France. Oh, OK. Controversial. Oh. Well, unless you go for the coat. But like the faux fillets and all of that, really, you know, you could, you could re-sole your shoes sometimes. <laughs> You've got to know who you're getting it from. <laughs> right, let's just have a look at this uh, quickly. Important that we, we sort of start, I think, start eating more, especially in yeah. this country, because it's the sort of thing that people, they're always a bit scared of, and, and you don't really need to be. You're sort of, it's always the domain of restaurants, isn't it, Fish? You don't think? Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Glad you agree. I do agree. Um, OK, so... Take your fish, so, like so, and then spoon over, spoon over a little bit more dressing, and then, like that, uh, and then you've got these bonito flakes. Now, if you look at this, move that aside. So when you put these thin flakes, this is just. Uh, shaved 
Benito fish. So it's like a tune. So you see it, can you see it moving? Yeah. See, we're just watching you address that plate there. <laughs> Normally I'd be sitting at home salivating, and now I know this is for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I've still got my, my old napkin. Are you, are you usually sort of slobbed out in your pyjamas, then? Yeah, totally. I'm in my dressing gown for the whole of this show. You know? <laughs> That's a beautiful image. Then, right. then I have a shower in the half hour before I, I go on to Football Focus. Football Focus? Yeah. That is your morning? That's my morning. <laughs> And then after football focus, if, the, if there was any games on, I'd be going to the football match, you know. <laughs> uh, well, you try that now. What will I be wow. making for Neil okay. at the end of the show? Uh, will it be his food heaven, lamb and potatoes? If so, I'm going to make part of the show, so he knows how this can swing the vote. I think you can log on to the really website like now time. and have your say. He's stunning. Good. Really beautiful fish. Yeah, That's really nice. Better. So you're glad, worth the effort of getting out your, out your dress. Out of my dressing gown, really and over to London. I even ironed my own shirt. Well done. But yeah. look, I mean, that is just... Again, refreshing, light, beautiful. And really quick, really simple. Really yeah. quick. Yeah. Right, time for a bit of nostalgia. As do you smell it in this? Don't worry, I'll be this. eating it in a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you smell it. <laughs> so, um, so then while, while that is roasting, I just chop some garlic and then uh, I'm going to make a little sauce here. You know when you're walking along this, the, the, the coastal paths and you see these little brightly coloured berries? Yeah. Naturally, you'd think, don't eat those. Yeah. They look poisonous. Yeah. It's those. Wow. <laughs> exactly. are, they, are they all around the coast in no, the UK? Or is it just I, don't uh, know. I don't know. You need to find them. <laughs> but oh, uh, it, is, uh, it is a really, really healthy uh, berry, actually. They, some people say that it's like one of the healthiest juices uh, mm -hmm. in the world. Uh, so it's, it has a lot of uh, antiox antioxidants and benefits. Is this, this is a thing of yours as well in the restaurant? Yeah. So that is, uh, that is something that is kind of like in the DNA of Mexican food. Have you been to cooking. Mexico? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I went from coast to coast, you know. Nice. I, yeah, I went from the Show Pacific off. to the Caribbean coast. <laughs> and ate rather than well. Yeah. Uh, you know, I had... Um, it's an amazing country. Right? Every little village or town you go to, they always say, our beans are the best. Yeah. You know, our tortillas are the best. Our, this, but I had yeah. kinds of things, wonderful ceviches, even up in the, in the mountains up in Oaxaca, I had great ceviches. Ah, uh, you've been there? Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amazing. I yeah, it's beautiful. From the Pacific side, through Oaxaca, down the other side, was this, and was ended this up to Tulum. That was absolute pleasure. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> How long was that? Um, I think it was about a month or so. Cool. I took. All oh, right. Yeah. yeah. But I've also travelled down through there as well. I used to go when we, if we had to fly into Cancun because I was doing a charity gig out there. I won't bore you too much with that. But I ended up in this what used to be a tiny fishing village called Puerto Morelos. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. But now it's a turn into some big town. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was great. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. Well, sorry, I will... Uh, sorry, not, yes. not, I don't want to interrupt you. No, 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 <laughs> yeah. I think. You it's can use chicken salt, uh, you can use any, any some sort of... Like, you can use miso, you can use anything that it will be like this kind of rich umami thing yeah. mm. to add some extra layer. You make sure that it's good first. Okay. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And then, uh, just going to heat up the tortilla. Sesame seeds and... Uh, just a little bit of herbs that we have yeah. right now in season in spring. So wheeze the head over the... Exactly. Yeah. Imagine like... that it will be a piece of lime. So it's like the British lime, let's say. OK, like a British lime. Yeah. It's, just, you know, it's like it's conducting or something. <laughs> <laughs> so you squeeze this... Yeah, you just squeeze it. Oh, my goodness. OK. Make sure you get all the brains out. Oh, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time I've ever eaten a prawn head. But there's so much... Good flavour in the head, right? Yeah, yeah. The best, all the flavour is in the head, but it's wow. some difficult, sometimes difficult to eat. It smells. Yeah, it smells just amazing. makes you feel a little bit like Hannibal Lecter. So, Helen, cool. I'd say we're going left field. You're going to say differently. Uh, right, time for a Nigella classic now. Uh, with pubs and bars finally set to open again next week, we thought we'd show you her perfect recipe for those of you. It's amazing. Love it. The cabbage is. Oh, I've never tasted anything like it. My stomach's just been rumbling all morning, smelling it all cut. I knew how good it was from our practice last week, so I was like, couldn't wait. And amazing to see everyone here. So. Ladies, right, let's find out whether Neil is facing his food heaven, lamb and potatoes and cabbage, or food hell, wobbly tripe. Like this. Ooh. Don't make those noises. Sorry. It's delicious. <laughs> uh, where do you think we've gone with this? Well, honestly, it looks like some kind of weird alien creature, doesn't it? Well, I'm, 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 I'm hoping people like me enough to give me what I really want. Well, I think you watch this show enough to realise how to play it, yeah. and I think you played it very well. <laughs> 72% of people want you to have lamb. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. What a surprise. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who voted. Don't forget, both the recipes, should you want this one, uh, are on the website. To, uh, oh, OK. Oh, about sort of wow. 150 mil. Give that a mix. That's the best thing, when you glaze the... 
the full meat is the best. Yeah, I mean it's delicious. Yeah, yeah. And it just and it's, it it helps because it makes it all yeah. sticky and it yeah. sort of holds together. And also shiny. Yeah, yeah, the shine, the shine to it. Yeah, the shine. Glossy to it. Yeah. food, you know, great. Right, so waffle <laughs> feet are out. I well, suspect. We try. Um, <laughs> okay, so so then you get your lamb. Excuse me a sec. Right, okay, I'm going to put that through. Oh, no. That's a brilliant potato dish. I yeah. love that. I love inventions for potatoes. It's the Irish heritage. I can't help myself. <laughs> so, listen, we couldn't have you on without talking about Line of Duty uh, and all yeah. your other stuff. Huh? It's back on the screens at the moment. Did you, uh, when you were in the first series of that, did you, did you get a sense of how damn good this is? You know what? The scripts were just out of this world, and we, yes, you did. Uh, 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 and also, the way we were working was really quite intense. It was. You knew, we all knew that we were, we were in something that was really yeah. cool and really um, bang on the money and yeah. captured the zeitgeist, but no one had an idea, idea of how it was going to take off because we started life on BBC Two. Just when, they, uh, when I left the series, then it moved up to BBC One. I don't know if that's indicative of <laughs> anything in particular. I wouldn't say that personally. No, I, I, I didn't. I, I got them started. So, uh, now they're <laughs> running free. And would, would, you, uh, would you go back? Oh, yeah, in a heartbeat. Yeah. I mean, number one, Jed Mercurio is such a brilliant writer. I mean, I've, have you been watching it? Uh, yeah. This yeah. Season? I mean, there is... I mean, it is the best, isn't it, for uh, leaving you hanging every episode. Yeah. And also, Jed Mercurio loves to get a big, fat star in and shoot him in the face. So you're just, <laughs> you're just wondering who's, who's the next to go. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, they're, they're always the best ones when you don't... Those are the best ones. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. the only analogy I'm drawing right now uh, is um, Game of Thrones, where you've got these huge actors yep. and then suddenly they're killed off. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> so I wasn't expecting that. It's Slice upset me. Two, giblets and all. <laughs> <laughs> Bring them here on a Saturday morning, we'll roast them. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, a really important point I forgot to mention. Uh, with these potatoes, you don't put them into water. Oh, I've done it both ways, yeah. Oh. But... Right. Nice. nice. Don't touch the handle. Thank you very much. Can you pass me another? Yeah, it's so yeah. sweet. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. In a, in a, um, and it's like, much, you can pound. have it charred than any of the inside. It's like quite raw and Cheers. Cheers. a bit steamy. But you can have it raw yeah. as well. Wow. One of the best... Yeah, sorry, that was quite a jump. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should get that wow inside. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was the show of the 90s, right? Yeah. I mean, it was, you know, I, I was glued to it. Our friend Lofty over here has lived his life throughout. <laughs> 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 Pretty yeah. much like those two. Yeah. Um, Everyone who tried to... to was that, was that a sort of a massive springboard for you? Massive. I mean, we'd, obviously there's no such thing as an overnight success because Martin, Caroline, and Leslie and I had been working for years. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but then it, it was one of those programmes that just had the X factor. It was just very strange. Because it, it was made on ITV, first of all. And oh, then, was it? Yeah. And um, then they, and we won, when I came into, when Harry did it, um, it was a complete failure. God bless Harry Enfield. <laughs> uh, but this is when, Harry Enfield. Yeah. Uh, but when I, when I went into it, 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 all of a sudden it was best comedy on ITV. Wow. And we went and won a BAFTA, you know. I, I, actually, on the same night as Adrian Dunbar's film, um, the, the thing that's gone out of my head now, um, also won best British film. Uh, um, <clears throat> so... Cut to, we, we, they say we haven't got room for it in the schedule. David Liderman leaves ITV, goes to the BBC and takes one show with him, men behaving badly, puts us on after Ab Fab, and then uh, the rest is history. It was like being shot out of a crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> All of That's sudden, the sort of thing Ollie Smith would come out <laughs> so, you know. All of a sudden, I was getting phone calls from restaurateurs saying, please come and eat in our restaurant. <laughs> you know, it was that kind of open doors in that sort of sense, but also opened a lot of doors that uh, weren't quite so much fun in terms of media attention, as I'm sure you're aware of. <laughs> uh, around about the, uh, the, the, the turn of the century, etc. Uh, so it was, it was a bit of a crazy time, but yes, I think, you know, thanks to that... Uh, I'm still working. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> you, you've got to, got to keep doing it. You know, it was a, it was a great, a great gig. And it, uh, it was very of the time, wasn't it? We captured the zeitgeist because things were changing, and everyone thinks it was about two men being really irreverent, <clears throat> which it was. It was two men being completely uh, misogynistic idiots, and the women were the, were, were the people who were in charge. But I thought they were total heroes. <laughs> yeah, well, as, as did a lot of young men. People would come up to Martin and I. We'd forget, and they'd come up to Martin and I and do, do, do the dance in front of us, you know. <laughs> oh, right. my gosh. Uh, tuck, in, tuck into that. That um, is Hells, what would perfect. You, what would you match with this? 
Uh, we need... A Is that Neil? Very, very good. I haven't tried to smudge it. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going in. There's a, there's a whole uh, tour here. You could take this home with you. Watch Football Focus in a bit. Don't... Don't, I didn't, <laughs> don't have another shower. Freshen up. Next thing you know, Football Focus and potato pie. Come don't, on. Don't, don't uh, approve. That's all for us today on Saturday Kitchen Live. Uh, thanks to Jane, Santiago, Helen and, of course, Neil. All the recipes from the studio are on the website, bbc.co.uk forward slash Saturday Kitchen. I've got more Best Bites for you tomorrow at 10am on BBC2. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye for now. <laughs>